Now, I do this week's NXT review under the assumption of two things. Number one is that these shows are still being taped several weeks in advance and then airing later on down the road where there's quite a bit of post-production and what have you. I assume that's still a case where they record like three or four weeks of them in a short period of time. If I'm wrong, please correct me down below. Um, number two is that this is at the tail end of things before the Beast in the East show on July 4th, that Saturday morning in Tokyo, Japan. So a lot of the WWE's emphasis and focus was naturally going to shift to that show and things that were going to be on that show, as maybe they should. So I wasn't expecting a whole lot out of this week's NXT. And, you know, there really was only focus on one story and one thing really mattered. Now, they were doing other things. Like, I still don't know what the hell Bull Dempsey was doing with the vending machine, and I in particular don't know why William Regal decided to figure out what was on the side of his mouth and then put it on his tongue. That was just bad. Bad. You know, they had a women's match with Carmella, and they gave her mic time, and that was kind of bad. Uh, you know, the VOD villains had a tag match that they won. And apparently them and Amori and Cassidy are going to have a match coming up to determine who will be the number one contender to the tag titles, and that's fine. You know, they're trying to do a little something here with this Jason Jordan guy in terms of him trying to find a tag team partner, to which I'm saying I appreciate that you're trying to give some type of story here and some type of depth to this character, but I would rather you just sit there and spotlight the guy maybe as a singles performer. Now, maybe you don't think he's fully ready, but isn't that part of the purpose of NXT is to get these guys ready? I mean, he's a big dude. You know, he's not white. He's got an amateur background. You know, there's a little bit of something there for everybody. let seems to have at least some type of personality or some type of clue in some way. Let's do a little something different with him or whatever. You know, ultimately, none of this stuff matter because this was really the Finn Balor show. And honestly, it should have been the Finn Balor show. The WWE, obviously, at least the way I see it, is very big on this guy. They're very big believers in this guy. They have a lot invested in him and a lot of future capital invested in him as well. So as a result, when you're heading into that July 4th Tokyo show, that you know network special, where he's going to be taking on a now-established guy on the main roster like Kevin Owens, you've got to try and build up Finn Balor, especially when you're not spotlighting him on your main roster, when you're not introducing him on the main show. You've got to make sure you do the best you can to that network audience that you hope will be the network audience that watches that special come Saturday, whenever the hell they might wake up. So again... I get why they were doing it, and I'm glad they were doing it, because to me, the priorities were in the right place, because as I've said before, once you get past the entrance and the face paint, to me, there's nothing there. I know a lot of you are going to talk about the Prince Devitt, Fergal Devitt shit in Japan. Well, that's fucking Japan. That ain't here, and I ain't seeing much here. So we need to see more. I know I most certainly need to see more. I need to understand what the, makes this guy tick? What's the whole point? What's his name represent? You know, all of these different things. What's his motivation? What makes him go? And they've done this series of videos about Finn Balor telling Fergal Devitt's story and done a good job, even though, like I've said the past couple of weeks, while on the one hand, they did a good job because they were introducing you to the person um, I don't think they were really doing a good job of building the character and explaining what makes the character and the performer tick and doesn't do enough to put something else there besides the face paint and the entrance. Well, this week that all changed to me. It doesn't make up for the rest of it, but in general, this whole series was very well produced, very well pieced together, and on the one hand did a lot. I said I thought I could have done more, but I thought they really brought it together well here this week. I really, really did. You finally, I think, got more about what makes Fergal Devitt tick. Therefore, as a result, 
finding out more about what makes Finn Balor tick, including, oh my God, an explanation of what the hell the name Finn Balor represents and stands for. Talking about the conflict, you know, with the inner demons and what have you. Finally, while I'm not seeing that translate to my network streaming device, my Schleg Daddy Tron 16,000, at least I can say that they're trying to give me something. And they're trying to spotlight him as a big deal because obviously to them he is a big deal. And it would seem clear at this point in time that more likely than not on that July 4th special in Tokyo, even when you get past the old thing of, oh, you're really over in that area, you're from that hometown, so Vince is going to put the screws to you because that's what Vince fucking does. In a lot of ways, they seem to be ready to have Kevin Owens go off and do his thing on the main roster. As a result, it seems natural to toss the title over to Finn Balor and let him have a run with it for the rest of 2015. Let him work on some things at the NXT level because, frankly, he's not quite ready for WWE primetime just yet. So I love the fact that they spotlighted him because so often the case, that's my issue, is when you're talking about building new stars, you have to get people emotionally invested into these performers and into these characters that they see on screen. You have to give them reasons to care one way or another for one reason or another. And the WWE went far and beyond out of their way to try and do just that. So something similar to what I wish they would do with a Neville on the main roster, which is something that can be good for an NXT brand and for the main brands like Raw and SmackDown, is you can try some of these things on a smaller, more hardcore type of audience. And if they work there, not in a geeky, hardcore type of way, but they just work and they're generally well-received and they get the point across that they're supposed to and accomplish what need to get accomplished, and these are things you could start implementing more into the formatting of, in particular, your Raw show that is three damn hours. You can make it more like a television show and less like a non-entertaining, crappy sports entertainment fest, which is what they do with a show like Raw every single week. You know, it makes it feel a little bit more like a television show, similar to what a Lucha Underground does. They sit there and make it basically like a telenovela. I mean, they basically make it, you know, in a lot of ways like a Spanish soap opera. It's a very refreshing presentation. It truly is. While I don't watch the product on a consistent basis, in part because I don't get it, and I don't care about enough about wrestling at this point in time to sit there and go looking for it every week, I applaud the freshness and the originality of the presentation. I applaud the fact that that they're doing something different. I applaud the fact that they're making it feel more like a TV show, a scripted TV show, than they are just a run-of-the-mill wrestling production. You know, and that's what I want in NXT to become a little bit more like. It's something like what they've done with Finn Balor here is fine. And then you have the main event tag where you're tying in Finn Balor and Samoa Joe on one team with Kevin Owens and Rhino on the other team. Finn Balor has issue with both Kevin Owens and Rhino. Samoa Joe has issue with Kevin Owens. It makes sense. You have the babyface go over here, which in a way you can always argue makes sense heading into the show because it could either be a good spotlight piece heading into a title change or a non-title change as well. So for what this show needed to be this week, having Finn Balor pin Kevin Owens, spotlighting him like you did, you did what you needed to do on this week's show. It doesn't make it acceptable every single week to do this. It doesn't mean that it made for necessarily great viewing you know, throughout that entire hour. But ultimately, I like good execution of something, and I thought this was well executed this week. I thought that last vignette piece on Finn Balor, that personal interest story piece, uh, really tied a lot of things together well did the most by far to try and establish what that Finn Balor character is about and what makes that performer and character tick. And you gave him some really good spotlight here, building towards your big show coming up on July 4th. Not really, like I said, much to complain about that standpoint of it because it was the only thing that mattered this week. And it's the only thing that's going to be on that show, you know, from this brand, so to speak. And then that needed to be the spotlight and that needed to be the focus. And I thought they did a good job here this week. I just going forward, would like to see them do more with establishing and developing characters and do more 
in terms of telling stories and telling more than just one story on a given week. If I want to tune into a wrestling show and watch only one story be developed over the course of three hours, I'll just keep watching Raw every week. I want to see NXT be different, not feel like a, a similar version of Raw, just with a third of the length of time.